Hey guys, what's up? It's Chris, and this is the first video of my new content schedule. In this video, I'm going to show you guys uh, what we're going to be building together over the next approximately two weeks. Uh, this is a project which I built about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago now, in Objective-C. But when we build it together, uh, we're going to do it in Swift, the new programming language from Apple. And it's basically a YouTube app. How fitting, right? Uh, it's built to display YouTube videos, which you can configure in a plist or basically a, uh, a data file that is included in the project. So I'm going to launch it right now on the simulator to show you guys what we're going to be building. Okay, so at the core of the project is a scrollable list of videos. So in this particular configuration, uh, these videos are from Trump's YouTube channel, and Trump is a guy who plays Hearthstone, a game made by Blizzard. He's actually quite popular in that community, quite well known, um, and he has really informative videos and entertaining videos. So I decided to configure this app for his channel. So on the left hand side, you can open up a menu and you can scroll through a bunch of different playlists. When you click that playlist, it's going to change the videos that display here on the main scrollable screen. Uh, and when you click into it, you get uh, the video details. So I'm going to have to level with you guys here. This app isn't particularly geared towards beginners because there's a lot of things that are happening here which are which might be quite confusing if you're brand new to programming with iOS. Uh, for instance, all these videos in this scrollable list, they're dynamically parsed from his channel. It downloads a feed from his channel and parses the videos and the images and shows it here. So it's dynamic. So when he uploads a video, it's going to show here. But that sort of feed parsing and feed downloading may be a little difficult for beginners. So I'm probably going to show two versions. I'm going to do a, a basic type app where maybe you have to specifically put in the videos that get shown. Uh, and then after I do that, I'll create a I'll create a couple more videos for those that want to challenge themselves and try their hand at parsing the YouTube feed and getting the data dynamically. So there's going to be something for everyone. And I'm also going to try to go slow and explain concepts which I think are new to you guys. And if any of you guys who are watching are students of my How to Make an iPhone App with No Programming Experience course, then I'm sure you guys will have no problem following along and implementing this how-to series. Before we begin, I highly recommend that you go to my channel page, scroll down, and go through this series, How to Make an iPhone App with No Programming Experience first. It's about 17 lessons long, but it's going to give you a, at least a foundation for the terminology that I will be using and some of the concepts which I explain in uh, video 9-10. Uh, those who are going to give you the basics of the object-oriented programming that I won't have time to explain as I'm going through building the YouTube app. And plus all of this auto layout size class stuff will also be useful. So I highly recommend that you go to my channel page. Just type into your address bar youtube.com slash code with Chris and you'll get to this page and then scroll down um, and look for this playlist right here and go through the first 17 lessons first. And that's going to make it a lot easier for you to go through this YouTube app series. Okay, so let's get started by creating our Xcode project. Here I've got Xcode open and it's worthwhile to do a quick check to see what version you're using because if your version of Xcode differs, uh, you may experience different results when trying to follow uh, the tutorial. So right here I'm using 7.1.1. So as long as you're using 7 point something, you should be okay. Now what I'm going to do is click create new Xcode project. If you don't have this welcome window, don't worry. You can always go up here. You can click about Xcode to see what version you're using. And then you can go to file new project to also launch a new project, which is what I'm going to do right now. So here, make sure that you're selecting application under iOS. And let's start with a single view application, which is going to start us off with our default basic app with only a single view. Next we have our project properties. I'm going to call this uh, YouTube app and for the organization name you can just put your name or your company if you have one. Identifier usually you're going to do com dot and then either your name or your company name 
and together with the product name you're going to have a unique ID for your app. Now this is very important, this drop down right here, select Swift and for devices select iPhone, we won't be doing this for iPad and then just make sure all of these are unchecked because we won't be using any of these features. Now click next and then I'm going to save this on the desktop. Uh, as for source control, you can leave that unchecked as well. All right, so now we have our default um, Xcode application. I'm going to quickly go through all of these files on the left hand side in this file navigator for the benefit of those who haven't really worked with Xcode before. So the first screen you have is presented uh, to you is the project properties. and if you click this little blue uh, node here, the root node here, this is what you're going to see, your project properties. We don't need to configure anything for this right now. Instead, we're going to click into the app delegate dot Swift. So this file basically is the entry point for your app. It allows you to handle a couple of um, events. You can add some code to execute before it enters the background or um, this one actually is after it did enter the background this is when it will come back to the foreground you know when you're switching in between apps uh, and so on and so forth so this app delegate.swift is just a file which gives you a place to put some code to handle these events now we're going to quickly jump over to the main.storyboard and here is let me just expand these nodes here this view is our single view and you can see this gray arrow right here denotes that this is the starting view for our application so in here um, when you go main.storyboard this interface is what's called interface builder so here you're going to select all of these elements you're going to drag buttons and text uh, sliders and so on and you're going to put it onto the view if you don't see this library make sure that you've got this button selected which opens up the uh, this is what's called the inspector pane and then down here if you don't see these elements make sure that you've got this tab selected the object library um, and only in the storyboard with the object library are you going to see these it doesn't matter if you see something like this because you can click this little icon here to change the view uh, okay, so when you add elements onto this view, how do we control the elements? How do we add code to it? Uh, well, there's another file called the viewcontroller.swift. And just like its name implies, this viewcontroller.swift class is responsible for powering the view in the main.storyboard, handling user events, responding to them, processing logic, and stuff like that. So we will be working a lot in this viewcontroller.swift file. Um, next, we have assets.xc assets, and this is what is known as our asset library. So here we can add all of the images that we're going to use for the application. Um, and if you've built an iPhone app before, you may know that for any particular image asset, you're going to have different versions for retina, non-retina, and even for the iPhone 6 Plus larger screens where you're going to be using 3x. So the asset library is a good way for you to manage your assets. Then we have the launch screen .storyboard, which gives you another interface builder type of screen to configure your launch screen. Um, this is what's going to be shown before your view in the main.storyboard. So this is an opportunity for you to uh, customize what that looks like as well. And lastly, we have the info.plist, which is kind of like a configuration file for the application. Okay, so that's where we're going to end off today. I want to thank you for learning with me. And if you're enjoying the series so far, I would really appreciate it if you give me a like, subscribe, and share it with your coworkers and friends. Okay, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.